Hi, everyone. This is Tom Broussard. It is Tuesday, January 26, 2021. Um, and today I am talking about, and you'll hear the title, um, about trim tab. It's very interesting. Um, all of us who have stroke and aphasia, a lot of what we think about is based on what we used to do with our lives. Um, and not a lot of people know who we were before the stroke. Uh, before that, everybody talked about our lives. Uh, after the stroke, not a whole lot of people want to talk to you about what you used to do, never mind what you now are unable to do with stroke and aphasia. Um, but we think, meaning all of us, people with aphasia, we think about our past and look for ways that we can better explain our future and the damage of our brain based on how we got to be who we were leading up to that point in time when we had that stroke and aphasia. Um, and for a large part of my life, I was with the Navy, sailing ships, building ships, understood ships. Um, and I think about that a lot. And in this particular case, uh, most of my work is about metaphors that helps people better understand how the brain really works. Um, in this case, uh, talking about trim tabs, as I say here, uh, that the speech therapists are in fact the trim tab of aphasia recovery, um, which is interesting because not many speech therapy people know much or anything about trim tabs. Trim tabs. Um, so I have to explain a little bit about that as you see from the article. Uh, but a trim tab, at least in this particular case, is a rudder within a rudder. Um, sometimes a big ship uh, with huge rudders, huge, you know, tons and tons of just the rudder itself. They are so big that it, you require another uh, rudder within the rudder, basically, uh, which they call a trim tab. And there's a good picture of it in my article. Um, and uh, just using that little bit of the trim tab helps build low pressure so that it makes it easier to have that rudder move and steer the ship. So it is an interesting way that they've uh, figured that out as inventors. And this particular guy, uh, Buck Fister, Buck Mr. Fuller, who people might know about uh, with his inventions, um, he always used trim tab as a metaphor for the forces of change. Um, and I liked him a lot, all prior to my stroke, and even went to see his uh, graveyard in, in, um, in outside of Boston, just outside of Boston and took pictures of them. You'll see that in my article too, because in addition to his uh, gravestone, he put another um, piece of granite there that says, call me trim tab. And he called himself Buckley, uh, Bucky. So you'll get to see that as well. The, um, but as I thought about how we got better, people with aphasia, how we get better uh, and realizing that we had our, our therapist and then realizing how quickly we're done with our therapist, right? I had really good insurance. So I got 30 sessions, uh, 30 minutes each. So that means 15 hours of therapy and done. That's it. So how is it that we get better and it takes months, if not years, in fact, in my case, years to get better, or even get as well as I am now. And that still doesn't mean that I'm perfect. So um, I wondered how we got better based on what we must have started with, with our therapist, with such a small amount of, uh, of uh, therapy. Um, because to continue to get better, it does require persistent, repetitive, and intensive language activities that induce plasticity. You've heard about me talking about plasticity in previous uh, presentations, um, but nothing about plasticity happens without more of those activities uh, going forward. And then that is what builds the additional neuro, meaning brain matter, uh, so that you can better learn based on these new, um, you've heard it before, dendrites, synapses, and fiber uh, to rebuild the learning field such that you're now able to speak and write and read what you couldn't do before. And I know it all has to do with um, uh, where the brain, where the stroke is in your brain, uh, how severe it was, and so on. Um, but it does take a long time. 
and as I thought about this, I realized that there, there, is, there are two components of what the speech therapy do. Uh, one is the formal therapy. That's what they do uh, in your classes, in your sessions. And what has to happen next is what we don't, most of us don't aren't aware. I wasn't aware. Most people aren't. That part of what the therapists do is try to create a, a, a um, uh, thera therapeutic, but a habitual therapeutic environment such that uh, as you start doing your work day to day with your hours, with your sessions, with your therapist, uh, what the therapists want in addition to what you're doing in the moment, because there will be a burst of plasticity in the moment, but you know, 15 hours is just there's 15 hours in my case. Um, going forward, you need, you need to do the activities to such that you'll get better day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year inducing plasticity on a regular basis. And the only way you can do that is regular activities on the outside, on the outside that induce plasticity on the inside. And you have to do that. And it turns out that the therapists do those two things. One is, the one is that they do it in the moment. And the two is to create this environment such that when you leave your therapist, you have to continue now building the habits that the environment that they have provided you such that it becomes habitual and you will continue to go forward without your formal therapy but with your own i'll say personal therapy using the same kind of activities that you had done before uh, with your with your therapist uh, going forward um, and that allows that habit to to carry you over to have you continue to do that uh, going forward um, but you do need both of those um, components of your therapy. And again, most of us do not know that um, and need to be informed of that by your therapist, telling, basically telling you um, that Tom uh, or whoever, in my case, Tom, uh, when we're done and we're going to be done fairly quickly, you have to do this on your own going forward. And it's, I'll say, relatively easy. It's not easy at all, but what is easy is the fact that you just have to do what you now have to do more habitually of reading, writing, and speaking poorly at the beginning, getting better along the way, getting better more the more you do it. Um, and there are a couple of good quotes here in the article from William James, the one who really is the one who started all of this and actually coined the word plasticity in terms of the way the brain uh, works. Um, the, and I'll read this for you because, well, because I like what I wrote here. Um, the neurological inertia of the mothership, mothership of language is massive and measured in millions, billions, and trillions of neuro brain matter. The rudder for that ship is also huge and if damaged, needs the help of the SLPs. They provide the in initial therapeutic activities, the habit that it acquires, and the ongoing language activities that, that become habitual with less and less effort and more and more improvement for the same amount of work. That is the way habit works, right? Everybody knows that. The first time you do it, it takes longer. You have to figure out exactly how that works. And you do it the second, the third, the fourth. After a bit, as if you were knitting, you don't have to think at all. It just keeps on going. It just keeps on doing what it has to do. Um, so that is what the SLPs attempt to do is create that environment that becomes more habitual so that it requires you to do those same things uh, with more improvement and less, less effort uh, going forward. And that is incredibly, incredibly important. Why we have our speech therapists, why they are the trim tab of aphasia recovery. I'll read you this last paragraph. Speech therapists help start the sustainable component of the therapeutic equipment and mode of force needed for the long journey towards reco recovery. They are the rudder within the rudder, helping steer the ship with the interest, support, and stimulation that is needed to establish the long-term therapeutic relationship between them and us. Speech therapists are the trim tabs of aphasia recovery. 
without them, we would be rudderless. So it's interesting because the therapists come and they go. You know, um, I imagine everybody knows who their first therapist were. Um, but as we leave, another one of us steps back in. So the therapists continue to work with each of us going forward uh, without really knowing how we, quote, are doing uh, once we leave. Um, one of the things we have to do is tell our therapist, written large if you don't remember who they were, but um, telling them how we are doing based on what you have done, meaning you, the therapist, what you have done to provide us with that environment. And so all of us now are able to express to uh, not only people uh, with aphasia, but the therapist, how we are all doing. So we all need to do that. And as I've talked with you before, um, in the beginning, we were all, all considered stroke survivors. Uh, and now all of us can become uh, and then express and then educate and become stroke educators as well. Thank you very much. Have a good week. And I will have another one coming out next week, I hope. I say I hope. Um, and we'll continue to go forward trying to help other people uh, with or without stroke and aphasia, how the brain works based on who we are, people with stroke and aphasia, and how, in fact, we got better in, in giving, sharing the reasons how we get better based on, again, some relatively easy, and I never mean easy, uh, but to to do those activities of which we were aware before our stroke, now realizing that those activities um, need to be habitual so that we can continue to do those uh, going forward. Have a good week, and I will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.